Welcome to Season 6 of High School Quiz Show Maine. We have 16 schools from across the state competing to be this year's champion and take home the $1,000 prize for their school's project graduation. In our third qualifying match, it's the Rams of Deering High School. <music> Taking on the Clippers of Yarmouth High School. That's coming up next on High School Quiz Show Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show Maine is provided by Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show Maine. Unitil, more than a utility part of your community. Safety Insurance is committed to environmental sustainability and supports many local charities. You can ask an independent agent about auto, home, and business coverage from Safety Insurance. Safety Insurance will help you manage life's storms. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to High School Quiz Show Maine. I'm Todd Guttner. We're up to our third match of the season as we work towards the championship and the $1,000 grand prize for the winning school's project graduation. In this match, two teams from Southern Maine hope to move on towards the grand finale. The Rams of Deering High School in Portland are taking on the Clippers of Yarmouth High School in Yarmouth. Let's start by meeting the players. For Deering, we have Colby, Bennett, Eliza, and Emma and alternates Asa and Zoe, and coached by Kyle Davenport. And for Yarmouth, we have Harry, Joshua, William, Sebastian, with alternate Annie, and coached by Sarah Wilson. The competition, of course, has three rounds, the toss-up round, the category round, and the fun lightning round. We'll start with the toss-up round. All answers are worth 10 points, and this is the only round with no point deductions for wrong answers. Players, though, must wait for me to complete the question, and if one team answers incorrectly, the other team will be given a chance to answer. So, are both of you teams ready to roll? Oh, yes, right? Okay, here comes the first question. On April 7th, 2022, who became the first black woman to be confirmed as a justice on the U.S. Supreme Court? Sebastian Yarmouth. Uh, Kentonji Brown Jackson. That is correct. We are off. In social media, the acronym FOMO most often stands for fear of what? <phone rings> Colby Deering. Fear of missing out. That's right. Mount Washington is the highest peak in the presidential range of the White Mountains in which U.S. state? <phone rings> Bennett Deering. New Hampshire. New Hampshire is correct. In Roman numerals, LXV represents what number? Uh, Joshua Yarmouth. 65. 65 is correct. Up next, we have a picture question, so players take a look at this monitor here. The question is, found on the Italian island of Sicily, what is the name of Europe's tallest active volcano measuring more than 11,000 feet and one of the island's most prominent tourist attractions? <phone rings> Colby Daring. Mount Vesuvius. That is incorrect. Yarmouth, you want to take a shot? <phone rings> Go ahead, Sebastian. Uh, Mount Etna. You got it. Nice job. A uh, National Wildlife Refuge in Maine is named for what environmentalist who wrote Silent Spring? <phone rings> Eliza Deering. Rachel Carson. That's right. Uh, what square in central Beijing was the site of a deadly military attack on civilians on June 4th, 1989? <phone rings> Colby Deering. Tiananmen Square. That is correct. Dolly was cloned in Scotland in 1996. What kind of farm animal was Dolly? <phone rings> Colby again. She was a sheep. She was. Nice job. The Revolutionary War came to an end after the surrender of General Cornwallis at what battle site? <phone rings> Joshua Yarmouth. Yorktown. Yorktown. Nice job. Up next, we have a video question. So once again, the monitor over here. Hello. My name is Heather Perkinson, and I'm the librarian at Greeley High School in Cumberland. What was the working title of Margaret Mitchell's 1936 novel, Gone with the Wind. The answer is Ba Ba Black Sheep. Ba Ba Black Sheep. 
In economics, what two-word Latin phrase that means by the head describes a quantity that is an average for, in, for individuals in a population? Joshua Yarmouth. Per capita. Per capita is right. In what year did William the Conqueror defeat King Harold at the Battle of Hastings? 1066. 1066. What ice cream flavoring that grows on orchid plants in little pods takes its name from the Spanish for little pod? Emma Deering. Vanilla. Vanilla's right. A substance with a pH of five is considered to be which of these things? An acid, a base, or a neutral? Uh, Harry Yarmouth. Acid. Acid is right. All right, we got a math question now. Get your uh, pens and pencils ready. A treasure chest contains only diamonds and rubies. The ratio of diamonds to rubies is six to one, and there are 350 gems total in the chest. How many diamonds are in the chest? Sebastian. 300. Sebastian, that's right. Wow, that was quick. All right, next question. Under the wave off Kanagawa, also known as the Great Wave, is a late Edo period work by which Japanese artist? Emma, Deering. Hokusai. Wow, Emma, that was impressive. Next question now. An important pioneer trail started in Missouri and ended in Willamette Valley of what state for which the trail is named? Eliza Deering. Oregon. The Oregon Trail, yes. E. coli and salmonella bacteria reproduce by what process in which a single cell grows twice its size and splits into two genetically identical daughter cells? Colby Deering. Mitosis. Uh, that's incorrect. Yarmouth. Go ahead, William. Meiosis. Uh, also incorrect. Binary fission is the right answer. In the title of a Billie Eilish album, what four words come after when we all fall asleep? Eliza. Where do we go? Where do we go is right. Old Ironsides is the nickname of what frigate that served the U.S. Navy in the War of 1812 and is still afloat as a museum in Boston's Charlestown Navy Yard. I'm sure you visited it at some point, the USS Constitution. <clears throat> All right. If you're engaged in osculation, by definition, you're doing which of these things? Kissing, washing your hair, or tapping your foot? Joshua Yarmouth. Tapping your foot. Incorrect. Deering, want to take a shot? Go ahead, Eliza. Kissing. Kissing is right. Yeah, good job. All right, in a standard English Scrabble set, what is the face point value on the J tile? Joshua. Ten points. Uh, incorrect. Deering. Colby? Seven. Also incorrect. Eight. Good guesses, though. All right. House Stark rules the North and House Tyrell rules the Reach. On what fictional continent that is the main setting of Game of Thrones? Joshua Yarmouth. Westeros. Westeros. We got a Game of Thrones fan right there. Nice. An elliptical Maasai shield and crossed spears is the central motif on the red, black, green, and white striped flag of which East African country? Bennett Deering. Kenya. Kenya's right. Next question is also a math question, so get it ready. What is x when one-fifth x equals one-half x minus 15? x equals 50. x equals 50. All right, we move on. In Aldous Huxley's novel Brave New World, what is the four-letter name of the drug that people take to forget their unpleasant thoughts and make them feel jolly? Soma is the answer. In physics, the Greek letter rho represents what measurement that is the ratio of mass to volume? Sebastian Yarmouth? Density. You got it. You nailed it. There have been at least four live action movie versions of Ben-Hur, and all of them feature an important race with people driving what kind of vehicles? Bennett Deering. Chariot? Yeah, you got it. Nice. Well done. All right, that wraps up our first round, and right now we have a score Deering 120, Yarmouth 90. We got a close one here, and off to a great start, obviously. Lots more to come, and we'll meet the players when we get back.
Welcome back. Before we head to the category round, we like to pause and get to know our players a little better with a slightly silly question. And tonight it is, if you could be any form of transportation, what would you be? And we'll start over here. Deering, Colby, what do you think? Probably a spaceship. I like exploration <laughs> and space and all that. Yeah, and uh, you can get to other planets really quickly, etc. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a good, that's a good call. Uh, Bennett, what do you think? I think I would be high-speed rail. Um, uh. I think it's the most efficient and cleanest way of mass yeah. transport we have right now. Like, like a bullet train or something yeah, like yeah, that? Yeah. Okay, thanks, Bennett. Eliza, what do you think? I think I would be a Razor scooter. <laughs> How many bruises on your shins do you have from the Razor scooters? A lot. Right? Those are like deadly weapons. Yes. <laughs> Emma, how about you? I would probably be a city bus just because it <laughs> provides a service bus? to many people. It's great. <laughs> You're such a giver, right? You're thinking of others. That's really sweet of you. All right, we'll flip over to Yarmouth now. Harry, yourself? I'd also have to go a bus, you know, just because it's bussing, you know. <laughs> the best reason out there. All right, all right. I like it. Josh, how about you? Gotta go with the defunct train, because I like to live off the rails. A defunct train? Like one that's derailed. Because I'm off Is the that rails. Your life? Yeah. I'm off the rails? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no order, no structure. <laughs> okay. Uh, William, how about yourself? I'd say just any kind of plane, because it'd be nice to fly. You know, I, I was hoping one of you was going to say that. I mean, to be able to fly around, get places faster, that makes sense. Sebastian, we'll wrap it up. I actually had bullet train written down, but you, you did. Know what? I'm going to go with rocket ship instead. <laughs> yep, I mean, that's probably the fastest thing we got anyway, right? Or it's out there somewhere. We don't really know if it is. <laughs> All right, the category round is next, folks, but let's see how well you do with our viewer question of the week. Hi, I'm Paul Riley from Safety Insurance, and this is the main question of the week. In 1997, residents of Shabik Island made national headlines in their fight to keep which of their favorite foods from being discontinued. Was it Ben & Jerry's making whoopie pie ice cream, the Double Dutch Girl Scout cookie, or Nabisco's Crown Pilot crackers? We'll have the answer later in the show. Next up is our category round with the following choices. What will it be? In case of emergency, poem sweet home, you're on a roll, I think they saw us, and moves like Mozart. Questions have increasing point values and wrong answers will cost you. The rules for this round are different than in previous seasons. Each team will alternate control of two categories. With each question, they can choose to answer and either gain or lose points. They can skip it and neither gain nor lose points. Or once per category, they can toss and force the other team to answer. Players will have three seconds to confer and decide what to do. Uh, let's see. Yarmouth, you are trailing, so you'll have control of the board here. And you get to choose the first category to start with. Emergency. No, I think they saw Dinosaur. Us. Dinosaur. We're going to go with, I think they saw us. I think they saw us. Okay, these are questions about prehistoric creatures. Uh, recognizable by the line of armored plates on its back and the spikes on its tail, what plant-eating dinosaur has a name that means roof lizard? Ankylosaurus. Ankylosaurus is incorrect. Uh, the answer is Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus. There's no evidence of dinosaurs in Maine, but there are plenty of fossil specimens of what Paleozoic arthropods, whose name means three-lobed? Three triceratops? No, because it's not a dinosaur. Oh, oh, it was the one that like, was like, and then it was like that, like an arthropod or something? Is that just right? I don't know. Should we just, no answer? Yeah. Okay, what do you think, Yarmouth? What, you can either answer, you can skip, you can... Skip. You want to skip it? Okay, the answer is trilobites. Trilobites. I think they saw us for 20. Featured in the 2017 movie The Meg, Megalodon was a giant prehistoric species of what predatory sea creature? Shark. Shark. Okay. Yarmouth? You, go ahead. Shark. Shark is the answer, yes. All right. For 20, I think they saw us. Standing nearly 12 feet tall on its hind legs, Arctodus simus was a giant, short-faced ancestor of what mammal? Short-faced, what's a large mammal? I don't know. Like a, a mammoth? Yarmouth, you'll either need to answer, skip, or you can... 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to say we're going to pass this one. You're going to pass Toss this it. one. Okay, so Deering, you'll be forced to answer this. I'll read the question for you again. Standing nearly 12 feet tall on its hind legs, Arctodus simus was a giant, short-faced ancestor of what mammal? Okay. A uh, bear. Bear is right. Great job. All right, we go back to Yarmouth here for 30 points, I think they saw us. A feature, a feathered dinosaur genus discovered in Germany around 1860. It's sometimes called Jurvigel, which means first bird in German, but in more commonly known by what name from the Greek for ancient feather or ancient wing? Archaeopteryx. That is correct. Nice job. Not even going to repeat it. <laughs> uh, I think they saw us. That's it for this category. We're going to pop over to Deering now for the second uh, choice. What do you guys think you want to go with? Uh, what will it be? What will it be for 10? These are all answers that start with B, the letter B. Which 1954 U.S. Supreme Court decision declared that separate but equal school segregation is unconstitutional? Okay. Uh, Brown versus the Board of Education. That's right. Uh, for 15, what will it be? What B word that loosely translates as one of the majority in Russian refers to a member of the political faction started by Vladimir Lenin in the early 20th century? Uh, Bolshevik. Bolshevik is right. Yes, nice job. What will it be for 20? Ancient history is often divided into three archaeological ages, the Stone Age, the Iron Age, and what other age that comes between them? Uh, bronze. Bronze is also right. You guys are rolling through this category. What will it be for 25? What 19th century soldier and statesman was called the Liberator because he led South American people's fight for independence from Spain? Uh, Bolivar. Bolivar, yes, you got it again. And what will it be for 30? A reference to the ancient city where Emperor Constantine established his new capital. What name do modern historians give to the Eastern Roman Empire starting in the year 330 and lasting until the mid 15th century? Uh, skip. You gonna skip it? Okay, the answer is the Byzantine Empire. Uh, Yarmouth, we're heading back to you now for your second category. What would you like? In case of emergency, please. In case of emergency for 10, these are questions about ways to avoid monsters. All right, here we go. If vampires are a problem, you could eat aioli, a condiment whose name comes from what pungent plant that's supposed to keep vampires away? Garlic. Garlic. Garlic is right, nice. In case of emergency for 15, Vampires hate mirrors, so you're probably safe in the Hall of Mirrors at what French palace where the treaty that ended World War I was signed? Versailles. Versailles. Yep, you got it. In case of emergency for 20, zombies are not good at climbing steps, so you might escape one by climbing 897 steps to the top of what obelisk in our nation's capital? Of course, the zombie could just take the elevator, too. Washington Monument. Yeah. Washington Monument. Yep, you nailed it. And 25 in case of emergency. Zombies can't swim, so you might be safe on an oil rig in what large body of water that touches Texas, Louisiana, Florida, and the Yucatan Peninsula? Yeah. Gulf of Mexico. Yes. And in case of emergency for 30 now. Werewolves do not like silver, so you could avoid them in which western U.S. state whose nickname is the Silver State? We don't know that I will not give an answer. I would just say skip. Skip. You want to skip it? The answer is Nevada. Nevada. All right, Deering, back over to you for your final category. What's it going to be? Uh, you're on a roll. You're on a roll. These are questions about performers and roles. Margot Robbie is known for playing what comic book character in the movies Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey? Uh, Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn, yes. You're on a roll for 15. Actress Amandla Set Stenberg played Rue in The Hunger Games and Star Carter in the movie version of what novel by Angie Thomas? 
The Hate You Give. The Hate You Give is right. You're on a roll. You guys are on a roll right now for 20. In the 2019 film version of Little Women, Sersha Ronan played which March sister? The one who becomes a writer. Uh, Joe. Joe is right, yeah. You're on a roll, 25. What actress who played Bella in the Twilight films earned an Oscar nomination for portraying Princess Diana in a 2021 film? Kristen Stewart. You guys are good. You got it again. And here's the final one in You're on a Roll. Kiki Palmer starred as the title character in what 2006 film about a girl from Los Angeles who is really, really good at spelling? Akila and the B. Uh, Akila. Akila and the B. Oh, Akila and the B. Akila and the B is right. You got it. Awesome job in that category. All right, that is the end of our category round with a score now of Deering 315 and Yarmouth 200 still within reach and everything can change in the lightning round. So sit tight and we'll be right back. How did you do with this week's tasty question, which is, in 1997, residents of Shabiq Island made national headlines in their fight to keep which of their favorite foods from being discontinued? Was it Ben and Jerry's making whoopie pie ice cream, the Double Dutch Girl Scout cookie, or Nabisco's Crown Pilot Crackers? The answer is Nabisco's Crown Pilot Crackers. The company gave in to their pleading and continued making the crackers for another 10 years. Nabisco even donated $1,000 to the Shabig Historical Society. Okay, we're about to head into the final 90 seconds of gameplay. It's known as the lightning round. Players, you do not have to wait for me to finish the question. You can buzz in at any time, but do not answer until I call your name. You get 20 points for each correct answer. Incorrect answers will cost you 20, and the other team does not get the chance to answer the question. The clock is set, teams. Here we go. In a book by Dr. Seuss, what title character speaks for the trees? Joshua Yarmouth. Glorax. Glorax is right. Exposure to sunlight helps your skin manufacture which essential vitamin? Sebastian Yarmouth. Vitamin D. Yes. Winners of what sporting event received the Vince Lombardi Trophy? Colby, Deering. Football. Uh, the Super Bowl? Yes, that is correct. Super Bowl. In Egyptian mythology, who is the goddess of the sky? Joshua Yarmouth. Ra. Incorrect. Nut. Two angles of complementary are complementary when their sum is how many degrees? Joshua Yarmouth. 90. 90 is right. The Alamo is an 18th century mission located in which U.S. state? Bennett Deering. Texas. Yes. What polysaccharide is the main comp a component in a plant cell wall? William Yarmouth. Lipid. Incorrect. Cellulose is the answer. Mice, squirrels, and hamsters are members of the taxonomic order. Uh, Bennett, Deering. Rodents. Rodents, yes. How many amendments are in the Bill of Rights? Sebastian Yarmouth. Ten. Ten, yes. In a recipe, the abbreviation TSP stands for... Harry Yarmouth. Teaspoon. Yes. The Nile is the longest river in Africa, which is the second longest. The answer, Congo River. And our winning team this week is Deering with 375 points. They'll be moving on to the quarterfinals in a few weeks. Our runner-up, Yarmouth, with 260 points. Thank you both for playing. Congratulations to both of you, too. Be sure to tune in next time as Falmouth High School takes on Coney High School from Augusta. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on High School Quiz Show, Maine. Production support for High School Quiz Show, Maine is provided by... Energy is about more than just keeping the lights on. It's about living life as parents, friends, and teammates. Unitil is proud to support High School Quiz Show, Maine. Unitil, more than a utility, part of your community. Safety Insurance is committed to environmental sustainability and supports many local charities. You can ask an independent agent about auto, home, and business coverage from Safety Insurance. Safety Insurance will help you manage life's storms. And by viewers like you. Thank you.